going to record the presentation so we can put it on the website in case anybody wants to go back and listen to it again. I think we've got that figured out, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Mrs. Zarin. I'm one of the counselors at the high school. I work with juniors and seniors at the high school. I'm Ms. Bates. I am your current school counselor here at the middle school, but I also have a sophomore class at the high school. And I am Mrs. Bliss, and I have the freshmen at the high school and students with IEPs. All right, so first, uh, as Ms. Zarin said, we're going to go through course enrollment with you. And let me start by talking about a little bit of terminology that you may or may not have heard at this point. Uh, when you enroll or begin your career at the high school, you begin the process of what we call accumulating credits, okay? Credits towards graduation. So when we talk about something being a one credit or worth one credit, we are referring to a year long class like band, English, science, German. Okay, some of those are year long classes. Okay, uh, if we were, are talking to, a, a, to you about a class that's worth 0.5 credits or a half a credit, we're talking about a semester class like art fundamentals or history of rock and roll or boys team sports or a lot of the semester classes that we have to offer health a requirement okay so just want to make sure you understand the terminology one credit or 0.5 credit okay because you're going to need to know that to know how much of your four-year plan that that class is going to take up okay uh, in a year you will enroll in at seven credits okay we are on the same schedule that you guys have as far as Monday, we go to all our classes. Tuesdays and Thursdays are A days, Wednesdays and Fridays are B days. The only difference is which classes we go to on A days and B days. We do like odds and evens, okay? Um, versus you guys are like one through four or five through eight or something, okay? But same type of schedule. So there is an opportunity to be, you will be in eight blocks of something, but one of those will be study center. Study center is not worth a credit to you uh, but it is required uh, for you to then help you successfully complete your other seven classes, okay? Just for next year. After that, study center is not required and you could actually earn up to eight credits for the years after that, sophomore, junior, senior, okay? Seven credits per year or 3.5 credits per semester. Yes, sir. So, if you have a sibling or someone at the high school, we actually have an extra advisory period on Mondays. So um, that's like our fifth hour, middle of the day. That's the only time you go to fifth hour. So like our odd or our A days are actually one, three, seven, and nine. But I don't like to say we're on a nine period schedule because that's confusing. I like to just say we have that extra advisory time on Mondays. Because um, it's, yeah, it's different from that's a great question. It's different from your study center, which will either be on an A day or a B day. Great question. Yeah. We are going to, yeah, we're going to get into all of the classes and we're going to go page by page with each department and what classes fall into those categories. Okay. All right. Let's talk about total graduation requirements. Okay. Uh, the total or magic number is. switch my slides at the same time. All right, the magic number is 25.5. And if I should remind you, you were enrolling at least seven credits, how many could you potentially earn in four years? 28, hold down on the math, just early in the morning. Okay, 25.5 is the minimum for graduation. I just want you to know these are minimum requirements. You're gonna take more than this because you're gonna fill up your schedule and you're probably gonna do more than the maybe three social studies or three math or three science or whatever. You may do choir all four years, so you're gonna have more fine arts, et cetera, okay? So we're gonna go through each of these specifically. So let me just run down this slide. You're gonna do four credits or four years of English, okay? You're gonna do three credits in social studies, three in math and three in science. Those 13 credits make up your core classes, okay? So that's about half your program or half of your four-year plan is core classes. Very similar here, like half your time is core, the other half is electives or explos or however you guys title them here. Uh, we divide our explos or 
those classes into categories uh, as defined by the state of Missouri. So we have fine art where you are required to do a minimum of two semesters or one full year of fine arts. Okay? And I say it both ways because like our art classes are semester classes, but our band and choir is year long okay? or theater. Okay. Uh, practical arts, one credit or two semesters. Um, physical education, all of our PE classes are by semester, so you have to do at least two semesters of PE over the course of your high school career. Uh, health is a required semester class, and personal finance is a required semester class. And then let me talk briefly on the electives, where it says at the bottom 8.5 electives. Those are anything that you do extra of the stuff above. Uh, with the exception of health and personal finance, you can't take those twice. But you can take extra English, extra math, extra science, extra social studies, or of course, extra fine arts, special arts, and PD. Okay. Once you take extra of something above the minimum, it rolls over into your electives. Okay. So your electives are going to kind of take care of themselves as long as we fill your schedule. Please just remember that you do have to complete these electives. I have some upperclassmen, some seniors that come to me and they've done a fabulous job of getting all of these things done before their senior year. So they're like, well, I'm ready to graduate. Well, unfortunately, no, because you still have to complete these elective credits, okay? Uh, again, young man over here, 28 credits is what you can earn in four years. Are you gonna be able to complete all those electives before your senior year and all of these requirements? No, because you don't have enough space in your day to do that. So just remember the, the magic number here is 25.5 credits. That's what you have to earn in order to graduate, okay? It is possible to earn those in a time frame that you could graduate early, but you're not going to be able to miss your senior year, okay? Questions on that? Just keep in mind those electives. You have to get those done too. Yes, sir. You can still graduate in the middle of your senior yeah. year, yes. But With the 25 points. Before senior right. year starts. You have to do yeah. that first semester of your senior year. Like yep. mathematically, it could be done. You could get there, you could get real close to that. Um, maybe if you do a health in the summer or something like something outside of the school day, a little extra, you can hit that magic number halfway through your senior year if you really want to graduate early. Good and question. that's a good thing to start thinking about if that's something that you want to do. Thank you got to plan you. for it. All right. So now we're going to go through all of those things, those categories that we just talked about. We're going to go through them specifically so you know kind of what's required in each of those categories in order to graduate. All right. So the first one is language arts. English. You have to have four credits, which means you need four years of English. So you're going to be taking English all four years of high school. Uh, Freshman year, you're going to take English one. So that's what you'll be taking next year. Sophomore year, you'll take English two. With English two, there is an EOC exam that is attached to that one. Throughout high school in the four classes, so those four areas, English, math, social studies, and science, you're going to have an end of course exam that's state requirements, kind of similar to the math test. Uh, so there's gonna be four that you take throughout high school. English two is one of those that you will take an end of course exam in, all right? Social studies is next. You have three credits that are required to graduate from high school. Amongst those three credits, your freshman year, you will be required to take American history. That is a class that you have to pass in order to graduate. It's a state requirement that you pass that class. So if you were to earn an F in that class, which I know none of you will do that, that will not happen to anyone, but if for some odd reason that did, you would have to take that class over because you have to pass it in order to graduate, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind. That's what you will be taking your freshman year. Sophomore year, all of our sophomores normally take world history, not necessarily a requirement, but the majority of students take that so that they can get their three years done because junior year, you are required to take government. Uh, government is another state requirement. The state actually requires a half of credit, although our government class is a full year. You will actually get a full year of government. Within that class, you will also be taking the United States Constitution test and the Missouri Constitution test. You have to pass those in order to graduate as well. Don't stress about them. If you prepare you for them, it's not a big deal. But it is something that is required. You will also, within 
social studies within government, EOC exam at the end with government. Okay, so that's for that history one. Do you have a question, sir? Yes. Then you do not graduate. Okay. Yep. So that's why it's real important to make sure that when you're in those classes that you're doing what you need to do in order to get the grades to pass. But yes, if you don't get 25.5 credits at the end of your senior year, you do not walk across, across that stage. You do not get a diploma. You would have to come back to earn the credits that you need. Good question. Now to add to that, as far as passing, um, that is 60, it's a 60% threshold, which is a whopping D minus. I hope many of you have much higher aspirations of yourself and goals uh, to get A's and B's or at least your parents do, and they're going to encourage you to do so. Uh, but if you do struggle in a class, as long as you are a 60% uh, higher or higher, you would earn the credit for that class. Not great, but. No Fs, yeah. All right, for math, uh, you need three credits for graduation. So essentially, freshman, sophomore, junior year. Uh, if you're going to go to a college, maybe try a more later, we'll be probably needing to do a fourth year of math. Okay. Um, required course for all graduates is Algebra 1. Uh, so if you're in pre algebra right now, you'll go to Algebra 1 your freshman year. And then you'll have two more after that. Uh, being geometry and algebra two. And we say up through algebra two because you at least want to get through that if you have goals of going to college. Okay, just so you have the background that you need um, for what you have to do in college. Uh, and in a course exam is taken upon the completion of algebra one. Okay, so you have like four in a course exams. She's already mentioned the one in government and the one in English two. There's this one in algebra, and then there's one in science I'll mention in a minute. Um, if you were doing algebra one in the eighth grade, you would take the exam or the end of course exam this spring. Um, so, I mean, that would be taken care of then. You'll probably have to do another one in, during algebra two time, but that's not a big deal. Um, so, if you're in algebra one right now, then you'll go on and you'll do geometry and then two more years of math after that, okay? A lot of colleges will say algebra one and higher, okay? But for many of you, it's just the three math credits that you need, and it might just be algebra one and geometry, and then maybe you're doing a program at the Casper Center like welding, and then you get your math and welding, okay? So there are options to get that third math credit, okay? But if you're going to college, I recommend algebra two. Make sense? Okay, everybody has to do algebra one and um, geometry. In science, okay, three credits required for graduation. Uh, as a freshman, you will take environmental science. As a sophomore, you will take biology one. Biology one is the one that has the end of course exam associated with it. Biology one is also listed as a graduation requirement, which means you have to successfully complete both semesters of biology one, just like Ms. Harry mentioned for American history, okay, uh, just like you have to for um, English two, okay. Those are just any class that has a end of course exam associated with it, you have to pass both semesters successfully um, or you're, end up, you're gonna end up sitting and retaking that class again with the freshman behind you coming up. Okay, um, if you are in algebra one right now, okay, and you're making a B or higher, you do have an, an option or the option of bypassing or skipping environmental science and going straight into biology. I would encourage you though to take some time to look at all the science classes. And if there's not two more science classes above biology one uh, that you are interested in or you think you'll do well in, um, then maybe you go ahead and just do the environmental science with um, most of your other peers. But you can talk about this in your algebra one class. Go right over here the next few weeks and decide if you guys in the group are gonna do both geometry and biology. Uh, you have to have a B or higher. Okay, it's there is a correlation, not necessarily the case, but some math students that do well uh, can also do well in science. Not necessarily always the case, but this just gives you an option if you want to move forward um, and take more science um, sooner. I guess I should say. 
Okay, foreign language. Um, this is not a graduation requirement. Um, however, if you are interested in thinking about college at some point, you have to go to the What's called the recommends and you take consecutive years of any foreign language. So you can take Spanish one and Spanish two, or German one. German as a only German and Spanish. Those are the two that we're offering in high school right now. Why? Because that's what teachers we could get. I mean, I'm being honest. You guys lost a Spanish teacher, right? And couldn't get another one. So I'm just saying it it could fluctuate. We could tell you German and Spanish right now, and it could be different in August. We I mean that's just a an area where Teachers are a little limited, so. Not a graduation requirement. However, can be beneficial if you're wanting to go into college or if your career path has anything to do with foreign language. Um, if you want to be an interpreter or something in the future. They are year-long classes, so you would be taking it both semesters and you would earn one credit total. Questions about foreign language? Health. This is a graduation requirement. This is a semester long class, which means you earn a half credit for it. You can take this at any point in your high school career. However, we strongly recommend freshmen take it and just get that requirement out of the way. You can take it as soon as this summer in summer school. Personal finance is also a graduation requirement. Um, this, you guys can start taking this your sophomore year. So you can take it sophomore, junior, or senior year. You cannot take it as a freshman. So you could take it as early as the summer after your freshman year. It's a semester class. You get half the credit for it, and it is required to graduate, which means if you don't pass it, you do have to retake it so that you do pass it. Questions about personal finance? Okay. Physical education. You're required to have one credit of physical education so a full year or two semester classes all of our PE classes are semester classes you can choose to take them whenever you want you've got four years to get that one credit in some people do both semesters their freshman year some people spread it out freshman sophomore year sophomore junior year some people do a freshman and a senior year it just kind of depends on how you want to work out that, that physical education requirement some of the options you have for physical education are boys and girls team sports you can take those two times so some people take both of them their freshman year and then they're done with PE. Some like to spread it out and do it different times throughout their uh, high school career. We have aerobics. We also have lifetime sports, which is a junior senior class. A lot of students really, that's a, a pretty high demand course. A lot of students really like that. It's lifetime things that you're gonna do like tennis, golf, different things like that. Uh, they in the past have done some field trips. Uh, those haven't started getting up and running again yet, but. It's a class that a lot of students like to take. So a lot of students will hold off on at least one PE or a half a uh, credit of PE till their junior, senior year so they can take that lifetime sports. So kind of think about that. We also have weights. We have our weights kind of broken up into two different classes. So ladies, if you want to take weights, but you don't really want to be in a class with gentlemen, then you can put on your enrollment form girls weights. That one is specifically a class for girls. If you don't mind being in a mixed class with boys and girls, then you just put weights on your enrollment form and it will be a mixed class with ladies and, and men, okay? Um, so that's kind of how you can work that out. Weights can be taken every single semester of your high school career. I have a lot of students that take it every single semester. Uh, normally those students are athletes or they're just people that like to work out or you know, whatever, there's a variety of reasons, but some people you can take that every single semester. We also have, for those of you that are early morning people and like to get up early and work out, we have a zero hour wait that starts at 645 in the morning. So if you are a person that likes to get up early and work out and has somebody that can bring you to school at 645 in the morning, that is an option. I had one student that did that every single semester of this high school career because he liked to get up early. So that is an option for you as well. Any questions about PE? Fine arts, you are required to have one credit of fine arts, again, two semesters. As Ms. Bliss said, uh, a lot of our fine arts classes are full year classes, like your band, 
choir, jazz band, theater. Those are full year classes, so that would be taken care of for the full year. Our art classes, like art fundamentals, drawing, ceramics, some of those are semester classes. So kind of keep that in mind. So fine arts are gonna be any of our art classes, any of our choir classes, band classes, theater classes. We also have a semester, if you're not like a performing type person, a history of rock and roll class that you could take for one of those semesters where you learn about rock and roll. Okay, you learn about the different things. You don't have to perform any rock and roll, but that is a way to do that. So you have to work into your high school career one full credit, okay, of fine arts. If I've done your freshman year and then it's done, a lot of people will do a lot of fine arts. Maybe they're an art person and they want to take all the art classes. Make sure you get that into your freshman year so you can get to all the art classes. Some people will take band all four years. So the first year, it's going to count as your fine art credit. And then the three years after that, what will it count as? Anybody know? Did somebody say it? Uh -huh. Okay. Electives. electives. It's going to be electives after that. Okay. So that's kind of how that works. Practical arts, again, one full credit of practical arts or two semesters. Uh, courses in practical arts uh, section are going to be business classes, marketing classes, ag classes, anything that's down at the CCC, journalism classes, business classes, computer science, um, family and consumer science, engineering and technology. Any of those are considered uh, practical arts. So you have to work in one full credit of that throughout your, your four years. Uh, again, you can work in many, many more of those if you want to as well, depending on what your career path is. Questions on fine arts or practical arts? Our Cast Career Center, as I've briefly mentioned, uh, has mostly a practical arts available for you, although a few of the upper level agriculture classes uh, might count as you know, a core class. But for you as freshmen, you may take Agriculture Science One or Ag Science One if you would like. Uh, if you want to be involved in FFA, you have to take that class, okay? And that will take up one uh, hour, one year long section of your plan. Likewise with marketing, okay? If you want to be get involved in the DECA program, you have to be enrolled, enrolled in a marketing class, okay? Uh, and so you, Marketing One is available to you in ninth grade, also as an hourly class. So you just go down there for one block, come back um, up to the high school and kind of get started down there. The other classes listed here, auto, computer networking, criminal justice, EMT, fire science, construction, welding, health sciences, and teaching professions. Those are the basically half day programs that we have available to, available to you as a junior or senior. Well, or both actually, they're two-year programs, okay? So you would be applying for those uh, in about two years, about this time you have your sophomore year, you would be looking at uh, applying and getting involved and being chosen for one of those classes. Keep up your attendance and keep up your GPA. So just real briefly, uh, GPA stands for your grade point average, if you don't know what that means. Uh, A's count much higher than D minuses. Okay, an A and a D minus will both get you graduation credit, all right, but the A is going to give you a lot higher GPA, all right, so that's obviously your goal uh, to get more A's and B's or more B's and C's than D's, okay, um, so set those high goals for yourself uh, so that there are more opportunities available to you. Um, any questions about Cast Career Center? All right, Summit Tech Academy. So this is similar to the CCC. Um, the biggest difference is that this place is located in Summit. So if you were to be accepted into one of these programs, one of the five programs, um, you would be responsible for providing transportation to and from. Um, it will take up maybe a half a day. You'd spend either in the morning or the afternoon at STA. Um, it is paid for by the school district. So it's not something that would cost you money out of pocket. Um, you can earn three practical arts credits um, for one of these courses. If you've already fulfilled your practical arts credits at that time, then those would fall in to your electives requirements. Um, these are the five 
uh, main programs that we send to engineering, computer science, health science, human services and finances, and arts and communication. Underneath each of those headings, you guys will see multiple class options. Um, there is an application process. I would say some of the top programs that we send students to would be aerospace engineering, um, digital electronics, software development, allied health, medical interventions, biomedical innovations, uh, International Studies Academy, and Digital Media Tech. So each one of these classes though, they have prerequisites, which are required courses that make you eligible for taking one of these classes. So for example, um, for Allied Health, you would need <coughs> Algebra 2, a B or higher in that class, and you would also need Anatomy or Chemistry. Um, if that's something you think you would be interested in, taking one of those classes your junior or senior year, then I would encourage you to go to the STA website and start looking at those programs and the class requirements to get into them. That way you can make sure you're meeting those requirements and you're not disappointed your sophomore year or junior year will be able to apply. <coughs> Questions about STA? Okay. The A plus program is a state and district funded program um, that supports students in pursuing college or post-secondary school. Um, which is something that many of you probably are not thinking about very seriously at this point. However, it's never too early to start. Um, and this is a great opportunity to provide some sort of financial help if you choose to go to college after high school. This scholarship can only be used at a community college in the state of Missouri. So that's something to be mindful of. Um, there is a contract you would have to sign just with the school saying that you know you want to participate in this program. And that's something that you can do at a later date. There are eligibility requirements um, that you will have to meet in order to earn the scholarship. Those being a 95% of attendance that's across your four years of high school. So by the time you graduate your senior year, you'll have to have a minimum of 95% attendance, which equals about you miss eight or less days per year. Um, you have to have a minimum of a 2.5 GPA. How many of you have seen high school students in your classes? this year. A couple of you. Okay, those high school students, they're completing their 50 hour requirement of mentoring slash tutoring services. Okay, that's why they're in here. So you would have to do a minimum of 50 hours as well. Um, and I believe those hours can be done anywhere at any school in the district. And then they also work with you as well. Um, the Algebra 1 EOC, you have to score proficient or advanced in order to be eligible. If you do not score that on your EOC, we can also talk about other alternative testing, like the ACT, um, or actively start to be used for CBD. That's a lot of information. It's okay if you forget it. You can ask us questions at any point in the next four years. All right, uh, just briefly, these next couple of slides refer to activity eligibility, okay? If you are, uh, wanting to be involved in a sport or a band choir that actually does like competitions, okay? Uh, you have to maintain your eligibility throughout your career and that's academic eligibility basically. Uh, so as you enter the high school, all freshmen are eligible to jump into a fall sport or a fall um, you know, marching band um, or show choir. You're eligible automatically. But then in that first semester, you have to make sure that you earn at least three credits in the semester prior, you know, prior to participation. So if you are wanting to do a spring sport like baseball or girls soccer or track, then you have to make sure you take care of business academically in the fall also, okay? Um, remember the sports like, um, wrestling and basketball that would spread over both semesters. Okay, so you have to make sure you're paying attention to that or and or band show choir spreads out through the whole year. Uh, when we talk about earning three credits, remember back to the first slide when we said we'll enroll you in seven classes. So you either have the potential to get 3.5 credits each semester. Okay, so this is giving you three credits. So it's like one little class wiggle room. Okay, again, I'm positive all of you are going to pass all of your classes, 
all of your four years, okay? But I do have to mention that if you mess up in one class and earn a failing grade, you could still participate in an activity sport the next um, semester, okay? Um, the handbook has more information as far as the activities handbook. If you have more questions, we can talk about that later, but I do always wanna mention that, um, that academics goes with it. Okay, uh, just to add, continue talking about sports uh, or marching band or some of these you can also compete in in college. Again, I know that's a long way away, but you, you have to start doing a lot your high school years that count for college, okay? We've been kind of talking about that. So there are 16 core credits that are required for NCAA, okay? Uh, and NAIA actually. Um, so what that means is you're gonna take our required 13 core credits. Remember the four English, three math, three social studies, three science adds up to 13. And then you're just gonna add three more. So for most of you, that might be two years of a foreign language to get two more credits. And then maybe you go ahead and take that math your fourth year because the college you wanna to go to, you know, if you wanna be in the Mizzou Tigers um, marching band or play football there or any of the other amazing sports in between, um, you would have your 16 core credits. Does that make sense? Okay. We have talked about a lot of information, gone through a lot of different things, and I know some of you are thinking, oh, some of this stuff is stuff that's so far off. I don't even need to think about that yet. I will tell you that your high school four years is going to go extremely fast. You will be a senior before you know it. So it's important to start thinking about what it is you want to do after you graduate now. Does that mean that you have to decide 100% this is what I'm doing and you can't change it? Absolutely not but start thinking about it and start preparing yourself so that in high school, you can take the, the things that are required or that are needed to do what you wanna do after high school, okay? Some of the things that you can do after high school, apprenticeships, military, community colleges, technical colleges, um, Missouri public and four-year colleges, some of your bigger universities like MUKU, some of those places, each of those kind of have different things that you have to do in high school in order to make sure that you are able to go into those schools or those places or those things. Make sure that you are prepared and ready for that. Give yourself enough uh, things that you've done so that you can be flexible. And if you just change your mind, you still are ready to go. If college is your plan, uh, we've kind of talked about this a little bit already, but just so you know, if college is your plan to graduate from Harrisonville High School, you earn pretty close to all the things that most colleges are gonna require. However, there are a few things that you will have to plan into your four-year plan in case that is your, your destination after high school. So just for example, college interest requirements. Uh, language arts is four credits. Again, that's what you have to have to graduate. Social studies, three credits. Same thing. First place that's kind of a, a little different is math. Some of your colleges are going to want you to have four years of math. To graduate, you have to have three. So if college is your plan, not a bad idea to make sure you get that fourth year of math in there so that if the college that you want to go to requires that, you have it done. I will tell you a lot of college representatives that I've talked to said the data and statistics prove that if you take four years of math, you are more likely to be very successful in college. So it does kind of have a correlation between the amount of math you take and your success rate in college. So just keep that in mind. So you might have to add that additional math. Science is three, fine arts is one, again, which you have to have to graduate. The big difference, as Ms. Cates talked about, is foreign language. Some colleges require or strongly recommend that you have those two years of foreign language. Spanish one, Spanish two, German one, German two. Not Spanish one, German one, okay? It has to be a consecutive two years. So if college is your plan, Try and work that foreign language in. You don't have to have foreign language to graduate from Harrisonville, but if college is your plan, make sure that you work that in. It's never too early to start looking at college websites. If college is your plan, or whatever your plan is, apprenticeships, military, technical schools, all of those things, it is never too early to start Googling that stuff. Look those things up, see what's required, make sure that you're setting yourself up to be able to do whatever it is you want to do after high school. Okay. 
those websites, a lot of them have become much more robust with tours and different things on them uh, due to COVID. So it is a great place to start your search and start just looking at what are some of my options after I graduate? Because I will tell you, it does go fast. I know it doesn't look like it now or seem like it, but it will. Okay. Questions about any of that? We are going to go to. Can you, yeah, leave it on that for just a second. Catch up to you. Uh, so, just to walk you through the process here, uh, today we're going to go on and start to look at our website and show you where to find some specific information for, like, that class you were asking about, you know, how, when it's offered or how long you can take it or how many times you can take the class. Then uh, we're going to work on your course enrollment forms. Um, it is basically a combination. It's your course enrollment form for ninth grade, but it also will expand and has part of your four-year plan on it. So we will begin to talk about and pencil in those classes for sophomore, junior, senior year, at least for the core classes, just so you kind of know what else then you have left that you can choose to take, okay? Um, we will be back on March 4th which is a Friday in like three and a half weeks, okay? Um, at that point, we will be specifically focusing just on your freshman year, okay? Making sure these are the classes you want for your freshman year. And then we're gonna talk about some alternatives uh, just in case our schedule doesn't work out nicely and we can't fit um, you know, our fundamentals into your schedule. So maybe what else can we take in its place or whatever, okay? Um, on the, I want to mention the advisory night, um, it, that's virtual, meaning you can Zoom in with your advisor or phone conference with your advisor, uh, 15, 20 minutes is all it's going to take just to, again, meet your advisor, which is a teacher at the high school that will work with you as freshmen and stay with you through your senior year assuming, you know, the teacher stays, you know, remains in the district, that's the goal, okay? And so it's just that one person that's your advisor, that was that you were asking about that extra period on Monday, that's the advisory time, okay? Um, but that person helps you with course enrollment as well, um, in addition to us counselors, just because the three of us can't get to all 750 students, so we help train our teachers to help you with this process as well. So question before we go to the website. No, it is randomly selected. And typically you try to balance, um, you know, but yeah, yes, sir. If you don't turn in your form by March 4th, um, well, we're gonna bug you about it. Um, we'll probably, give you a blank form that day and say, fill this out, pick your classes, okay? Um, because we build our entire schedule based on what students choose. So if I have 100 students that want to take art fundamentals, I need to try to, I need to know that number so that I can balance and try to offer as many sections to allow for as many students to make it into that class, okay? If you don't have a turn in by then, um, probably I'll just end up picking classes for you, okay? So this is your opportunity to be involved with it because it's your four-year plan, okay? All right, we're gonna go over to the website. Going to go to uh, Harrisonville High School. Click on that. You're going, you'll go to the Harrisonville website, the Harrisonville High School. Scroll down to where it says counselors. Underneath counselors, there's a course enrollment tab. So you're going to have to click on course enrollment and then scroll back down. And now we're going to go through all that is in here. So first, we have the program of studies guide. Just Give you a little bit of information. So if you click on this link, it's going to pull up the program of studies guide. It is like a 60 page document of all the classes that we offer, all the CCC classes. Uh, it has STA information, it has high school graduation, it has everything, everything high school in that document. 
Uh, this document has divided it up a little bit. It doesn't have any of the course information, but it has all of the other high school information, like graduation requirements, A plus requirements, uh, some of those things. So those are just two documents. If you have questions about anything high school, those are great documents to look through because they're going to have a lot of those answers there. Give me a second to catch up with you for my recording. Thanks. Sorry. Forgot to hit screen share. All right. Program studies guide. Okay, we're good. Thanks. Uh, the next little, uh, the next one is course enrollment details. Underneath course enrollment details, you can click on the enrollment calendar. If you forget when we're coming back to pick up your forms, or if you have any questions about enrollment information, you can come to this calendar and it has all the information about enrollment right there, all the dates that everything is due. So that's a great place for you to know about. Also on here, we have the PowerPoint that we just went through. Click on there, that PowerPoint's right there if you wanna refer back to it. And we are recording right now, so that will be updated here shortly with the recording if you wanna hear all of the information that we have shared as well. After the details, I have a page on the course enrollment forms. We are going to give you a form today. However, if you lose that form, you are the class of 2026. Uh, so you can just click on that and you can print out another form if you need one. It's also attached on Google Classroom. There you go. So you have it on Google Classroom as well. Uh, after that, the, deport, the department course information. This is a great page if you are trying to fill out your enrollment form and you just aren't sure what classes you want to take or what classes are available. This is a great place to go. It's divided up by departments and by fine arts, practical arts, English, math, all of those things. So you can quickly get to the information that you want. So real quickly, we will look at um, visual arts, for example, to kind of show you how this is set up. So underneath fine arts, visual arts, you'll see uh, the courses here. This is, this is gonna be a list of all the courses that are in the visual arts department. So for example, on this first one, Art Fundamentals, that's the title of the course. Right underneath it, it has the grades that can take that course. So Art Fundamentals can be taken by freshmen through seniors. So anybody can go into that course. Over here on the right-hand side, it says 0.5 credits, which means how long of a class is it? A semester, very good. Underneath that, it gives you the description of the course of what you're going to do in that course. If I scroll down here and you look at drawing, Again, drawing is for 9 through 12, so anybody can take that. It's 0.5 credits, so it's a semester long, but it's added this prerequisite. So prerequisite is something that you have to do before you can take that class. So before you can take drawing, you have to have what class? Art fundamentals, art fundamentals very good. And you have to earn what in art fundamentals? You have to have a C or higher. If you don't have that, you will not be allowed to take drawing. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. Look through prerequisites, make sure that you are meeting those. If a class like painting says 10 through 12, can you take it as a freshman? No. No, so don't put it on your enrollment form. Very good. All right, next on our enrollment information is career paths. This is a page if you kind of know the path that you want to take, but you're not sure what job you want in that path. This is a great page to just kind of look at and go through because uh, it gives you a lot of good information in classes that you could take in high school. So if we look at accounting, for example, over here underneath accounting has some career options. If you wanted to go an accounting type route, these are classes that you could, or classes, these are jobs that you could take or that you could do with an accounting type major. These are high school classes that you should take or look into taking in order to meet some requirements for that. And these are clubs that would be good for you to get involved with. Underneath that is post-secondary information, so degrees and things that you should look into earning. Uh, post-secondary, so after high school, that would be good if you want to go into that field. And this is a career outcome so, or outlook, so maybe the type of money that you could be able to make with those types of jobs. Okay, so those are just a good page if you're just not really sure what you want to do and you want to look through some different careers. Those pages are great options. Um, after that, uh, below that is advanced placement and dual credit. Just so 
a, a real quick overview. As your freshman year, you're not going to be able to take any advanced placement or dual credit, but just so you know what they are, they are um, classes that are more intense. They're college level type classes. So if you are somebody that's interested in taking some, some classes that will give you some college credit, uh, just know that they're a little bit more intense than your regular classes, but they are options for you. AP or advanced placement classes are classes that you're going to take for a year. Uh, you can decide if you want to take the test, the AP test in May for that class. Costs, right, this year it costs $99 to take that test. You would take it in May. The scores for those tests go one through five. Most colleges that you go to will want you to have a three, four, or five in order to give you college credit for that class. Uh, depends on the college, what score they would accept, and what score they expect, and what credit they will give you. So it kind of depends on where you're going, what you're doing, and what score you get. Dual credit, on the other hand, is a college credit course, which means you're going to pay up front. Usually it's $300 plus uh, to take that class or to take it for college credit. Um, the score or the grade that you get at the end of the class goes on a college transcript. So if you're taking that class through UCM, you will have a UCM college transcript as a sophomore, junior, or senior in high school. And that is a score that will go with you to whatever college you go to. Okay, so that's kind of the difference between dual credit and AP credit. Any questions on that? And that pretty much covers our website and the different things that you can access. On our website. So next, we're going to go over or start looking at your um, enrollment forms.